All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. As promised, today we are going to do a sub rogue pre patch mythic plus guide. And uh, you might think to yourself, well, Chris, why the hell do we play sub rogue in mythic plus? I'll get to that in a bit. But first, if you like and enjoy the video, don't forget to like the video. Leave a comment down below what you thought about and what you want to see next. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more good content and ring that damn bell button. Do you know, like, less than 10% of you? Like, I think it's, like, actually less than 5% of you are, who are watching these videos are subscribed. Go and sub. You don't want 4% tile looks. That's really bad. Also, check out the live stream over on twitch.tv slash killerchris for great live streams where you can also ask me questions in person if you're needing a more immediate answer and come and join us for some shenanigans in mythic plus dungeons or raids we raid a lot together here and kill bosses get loot hell yeah all right on with the video all right guys so for talents azurite essences and the Traits, we are going to keep it together here to try and keep it a bit short. Uh, since the video, last video got a bit long. And it's pretty much similar to the uh, single target video. So go and check that out. I'll have that uh, linked up in the corner. We'll use the annotations for once. So uh, go check it up out there. Or in the link below or on the channel. All right, guys. So for the first row here, we are actually having one difference. The first difference uh, from the single target build. And that is that we will be running premeditation. Weapon Master is... Also decent in practice, uh, but in simulation, uh, it's just a bit easier to play with, play with pre-med. And it's a bit more fun because you get a lot quicker start in that you get a little head start in the slice and dice. Really nice. Recommended. Night Stalker. Oh, more shadow dance damage. Uh, Deeper Strat. More damaging and finishing movers. And since we are going to be bathing in combo points... Definitely, we want to pick Evo Stratagem. You can pick what you want, but Cheat Death for Mythic Plus definitely the best one. So the next one here is not actually that... Um, what would you say? It's not actually that free pick as it were on the single side here, but because Play on the Week has some insane value in Mythic Plus, especially of the sub rogue, due to... The nature of us having basically infinite cheap shots and infinite kidney shots. Um, so this is a 6 second 10% damage increase from everyone in your group. So one of the strengths of sub rogues is the priority damage. Which Prey on the Reek will help tremendously on. Definitely take that. Enveloping Shadows. The extra uptime of uh, Shadow Damage or Shell Dance is great when it's details in the previous videos why that talent is good. Same same stuff here. So, uh, since we don't have Black Powder yet, uh, we kind of have to have a AoE finisher. Secret Technique, we'll take that one. Uh, I am not sure if this will be best for Shadow Dance as well. Um, but again, since we are really high in the gear uh, rotation of the expansion as we are at the very end, the extra energy regen, especially in Mythic Plus, isn't going to be as valuable to us as Secret Technique. Um, and we'll go in on how you use that later. So, for the Azerite Essences, you actually have a few choices here. Um, so, there is two that sim really well. And you may notice that I'm not using any of these in my major or minor, for that matter. So, the two that sim really well is Breath of the Dying... Uh, the reason why Breath of the Dying sims incredibly well in Mythic Plus is if you land the hits, so you have 100% optimal, optimal use of Breath of the Dying, finishing off every target with Breath of the Dying, it's really, really strong. Are you going to do that? More likely than not. Uh... I have talked to some other rogues and we've come to the conclusion that this is basically a no-go. Uh, so the two others that are really good is Blood of the Enemy. It's uh, better for like lower keys and in the pre-patch here when we talk lower keys, we are talking 20, 21 keys and below. 
once you get up above that and start to do massive pulls because you have to keep up with some extra AoE damage, Essence of the Focusing Iris is the go-to choice. Uh, and depending on the size of the pull, you want to handle this with or without Shadow Dance and Symbols. More on that later. So for the Miners, we are going to use exactly the same as we did in Single Side. Uh, Conflict of Strife, Crucible, and Memory. Memory is going to be this almost no matter what, since it just gives you a lot more energy regen and it's really nice. Uh, some other choices you could take. Purification Protocol might be uh, useful depending on the Myth Plus dungeon you are going for. And yeah, whatever. Breath of the Dying, single target, also decent. And if you don't have anything else, con Condensed Typhoon might be okay. Uh, so these are the ones that I recommend, uh, but definitely get those. They should be pretty easy to come by. Um, if not at rank 3, then at rank 2. Uh, Crucible, everyone has that. Uh, Essence of the Focusing Iris, super easy to come by as well. Uh, you should all have that at this point, I feel like. So, um, yeah. If you don't have Blood of the Enemy, don't worry. So, for Azerite traits, we are going to take a look at my pieces here. You're going to be running the exact same as single target. So that is like free Heart of Darkness, the uh, Nilotha Raid trait. And you'll get those from the two pieces from the Nassau fights and from Sticky and Guys that you get from Mort. Uh, take those pieces. Those are the best ones. Uh, I don't have a Sticky and Guys in Mythic because I've given all mine away because I thought I was never going to use that again. Well, joke's on me, I guess. So um, what have I taken into other considerations i have taken a high altitude turban because i thought replicating shadows might be decent and in practice in theory it's really good for mythic plus like hey free rupture casts on on different targets but the fact is that rupture does so little damage and the prog rate is so low and by the time you probably get a prog rate the value is kind of lost in it um so if you can it's fine if not uh take something else uh, I would recommend if you can't get the um, all the things, all three of the these Heart of Darkness pieces. Uh, definitely you should get one Blade in the Shadows, one Inevitability, and one Burst Dance. Besides that, try and take whatever gives you some extra stats. Really great options. Uh, we are going to go for the same stat priority as we have done previously. Burst... Crit, Mastery, then Haste. Gem everything you can into, into Verse. And enchant the same as before. Verse and Force Multiplier is what I've been using and having great success with that. Trinkets. We are looking at Torment in a Jar. is pretty decent. Does like uh, six, around 6-ish six percent depending on the dungeon of my total damage. So definitely a pick that is worthwhile. And if you can time so the big hit lands in your Shadow Dance and uh, Symbols of Death, that is going to give you some extra crit damage. And Spyglass! Hooray! Spyglass, Spyglass is really great. Uh, other options you can use is that you can use uh, Arlen's Loaded Dice. You can use uh, Golden Plumage for extra burst damage, especially on single target. In Tyrannical Weeks, this is going to be really, really good at that point. And what other trinkets could we take? Just a quick look. I think... Um, yeah, I'm not even going to recommend Razor Call. Uh, I would say these are the trinkets you should try and look for. Otherwise, try and look for trinkets that gives you some extra proc. That gives you stats and burst. Uh, I would not recommend using Gale Caller Spoon. There's been some discussion how about how good that might be. I don't think it's worth a sub. Uh... Azerox Resonating Heart uh, might be decent. But the trinkets that I have found to work best is uh, are, are these ones here. And Plumage. And they are fairly easy to compile. And that is going to conclude it for talents, trinkets, and Azerite pieces and such. So, uh, guys, let's head into the next chapter.
All right, guys. So here, when we are going to do our heavy AOE burst. So a few things you have to keep in mind as sub. We, we are not going to do that much AOE burst. Our law and assassination is way better for that. But, however, we like to play sub. Sub is fun. Sub is, sub is great. Sub is love. Sub is life. So here we have our focused Azerite beam, which is going to be the primary component. Depending on the amount of mobs, uh, if it's like more than five mobs, you want to use that within your burst cooldowns. If not, you want to use it outside. And the idea behind it is that the percentage scale you gain from Shadow Dance and Symbol of Death is going to be a much bigger value, having a lot more AoE damage when you have more targets. And you're also in that going to fit in a secret technique. So it's going to look something like this. Yeah, I'm going to demonstrate how it's going to be with multiple targets and a lot more targets than five, even though we only have five training dummies. Sorry, guys, I couldn't spawn anymore, I guess. So uh, this here is how it is going to go. We're going to stealth so we get our premeditation. So we get a quick extra slice and dice. Rupture. Get a few combo points. Pop our stuff. And then we're going to blast them. Into a secret technique. And we're going to continue to blast. And out of the shell dance here again, we are going to refresh our slice and dice. And since we actually have less here, we are going to... Primarily in our... Uh, shadow dance we are going to focus on single target and when we come out then we can do some more single target again and that is how the burst goes for bigger packs for smaller packs you want to basically do the same here we want to maintain up our fine weakness on our main target and we are going to use our cooldowns we are going to go in and pop secret technique and we're going to do a lot of damage and uh, we're going to kind of balance it out so we maintain the uh, Shadow Strike damage on the primary target. And we are going to do as much AoE as we can in between as well. So we're getting a good mix of priority target on a high value target. It could be a target with a really annoying cast like the uh, Mentic Rapids in Shrine. Or a Hexer from Atal Dasar. Casting the annoying, like, spreading hex. Uh, those we want to kill quick. So, therefore, we are going to prioritize more priority damage. In the other scenarios where we don't really have any of that, we are going to try to use more of Shuriken Storm in those phases and get some more AoE damage out. So, we are losing a bit of uh, priority damage for the sake of spreading out the damage more, especially here in the first week where we have Sanguine. And it's pretty good to like spread out the damage and kill all the targets at the same time if feasible and that is going to cover the aoe first here like i'll go into more general play style here in a little bit All right, so we went over how we burst here. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over Blood of the Enemy. Then we're going to go over primarily single target or priority damage. Uh, and then we're going to like see however many mobs you have, what you're going to do. So we're going to start off if you roll Blood of the Enemy instead of Essence of the Focusing Iris. What you want to do then when you burst is you want to line it up with Secret Technique. You want to line it up with Symbols. And you want to line it up with Shadow Dance. So you're going to press Shadow Dance. And symbols, I'll leave a uh, macro to, uh, to the burst macro, kind of like we did on the single target. It will be in the comment as well, so make sure you go down and check it out. And you pop a lot of the enemy into secret technique, and then you just continue to do whatever you do, whether it's single target or priority target, and just hammer the damage out. You're going to have a very short window, but there's going to be a lot of damage in that short window. So that is also something you have to take into account to a run. Of the enemy, or the one Iris. So, if you are just trying to nuke one down, it's pretty simple. You uh, hit Shuriken Storm whenever there's two or more targets. When you have uh, two or more targets, but you're going to focus priority damage. So, outside of Shadow Dance, Shuriken Storm, get your combo points, 
outside of shadow damage, you're also refreshing your slice and dice and your rupture. If the target is going to survive like 15, 16 seconds, then it is worth, uh, I wouldn't say it's worth to put it on uh, below. You would much rather want to keep that global cooldown for another shuriken storm or a um, eviscerate if it is on the low side. After that, it's uh, pretty much uh, just then we get into the target where we're going to have Shadow Dance up and we are going to just hit Shadow Strike and we just, we're just going to do our single target. We're just going to hammer down burst it. You still want to use um, Secret Technique if you're a priority target damage. It is still a single target DPS increase and it gives you a bit extra cleave. It's going to be real nice. Make sure you use it within Shadow Dance and Symbols though. Uh, you can save it up a bit of combo points and then you can press the uh, macro. Uh, so that will use Shadow Dance and Symbols. And then press Secret Technique right after. And then Shadow Strike, Shadow Strike. So if you have the combo points beforehand, that's great. So if you have three or more targets and you still want to cleave, uh, like three targets, you still want to use uh, Shuriken Storm outside and then Shadow Strike inside. If you have more than one priority damage target, more than one mob that needs to die quick, that could be um, something that heals or something that has a annoying cast that you're running an interrupt rotation on. Uh, make sure you get find weakness up on those targets and then just do your thing. Eviscerate as much as you can. Keep the find weakness up. Shadow Strike to keep your uh, Blade in the Dark or Blade in the Dark. I think it's called Blade in the Dark. Keep that trade up. Make sure you keep the 10 stacks essentially for the next poll as well and eviscerate as much as you can again do not use rupture and slice and dice within your cooldowns even though they're short cooldowns try and see if you can find it up outside also uh then we get into the i have six or more targets um so six or more targets we are going to stop using slice and dice we're going to stop using uh Rupture, uh, slice and dice, try and see if you can get it up with a shadow strike or two. We're going to make make sure we keep find weakness up on our primary target at the very least that we're hitting. If you can get a quick rupture up before we start and you can try and replicate that if you're running replicating shadows, do that. And then we are going to spam Shuriken Stone and we're going to spam this raid and we're going to press our cooldowns and we're going to press secret technique as much as we can. And that is pretty much how it goes for the... Uh, for the doing damage, depending on how many mobs it is. One thing to mention about Shadow Blades. Try and keep it for high health mush, uh, mobs. So it could be like a little mini boss. It could be for the uh, pillars or something like that. Make sure you have it up for the boss fights. So that is where a lot of your strength is going to come in. You're going to be able to run over those bosses like nothing, almost nothing else. So uh, keep that in mind. Make sure you have Shadow Blades up for the bosses. That is... The Definitely where you're going to get the most value out of it. All right, guys, this here leads into probably the question that many of you guys are having. Why the would you want to play sub rogue in Mythic Plus? It's very simple, guys. Sub Rogue is a hell of a lot of fun. And personally, I have been looking forward to playing Sub Rogue for a extremely long time. And to be honest, I have never had this much fun in BFA in Mythic Plus as I had playing Sub Rogue. I've always hated Outlaw. And yeah, Sub Rogue is a lot more fun. And in before I say, well, fun isn't going to get me high keys. I mean, God damn it, guys, it's pre-patch. Enjoy, have fun. Keys are pretty easy. They're pretty forgiven. And if you want some really high keys, you can still do like decently high keys. And if you need higher keys than that, once you get up higher to like 26, 27 and above. At that point, you should start looking into playing Outlaw. IMO. If, if you want to be competitive. Assassination is still viable, but ideally, I would, I, personally, I would prefer sub. So besides damage, what do sub rogues bring to the table? We bring the 
Oh, I identify as a Southern Rogue. I said we when I said Sub Rogues bring a lot of priority damage. So the damage uh, per or the value per DPS is significantly higher than uh, just random cleave padding uh, that you'll see in many other classes do. We bring a bucket load of utility that the other specs don't do. And Prey on the Reek extra damage is a lot higher in uh, in Subrook because we get a lot more out of them due to Cheap Shot and Shadow Dance. So all in all, I definitely pre prefer playing Sub and it's definitely the most fun. And last but not least, Sub is by far the easiest spec to get high up on the leaderboard. We have been struggling to keep our top 10 spot, but uh, our top uh, or rank one spot on the sub rogue leaderboards on raid IO. But we have managed to like give them a tough fight for it. We are almost at 4k raid IO with sub rogue here at the moment. Pretty fun, guys. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll stream some more. Like, ridiculously high key for a sub rogue ever to go into um here on the live stream so again don't forget to go and check it out all right guys hope you liked and enjoyed the video this will be it for this time here guys uh don't forget to check out some of the vlogs as well i have here on the channel uh i'll put links uh to them down in the description and likely i'll put one over here as well watch the look right there or check out the other video over here or click my face for subscriptions. Subscribe to my channel. That would be sick, guys. So a lot of cool RL content coming up and also a bit on the uh, changes to the setup because there's been quite a lot as well. We'll go over those in the coming vlogs. And I have some cool new uh, toys to show you. Some techie toys. All right, guys. Thank you once again very much for watching. And as always, guys, I'll see you on the live stream or in the next video, whatever you choose to. Take care, guys. Bye.